there's still nothing going on with Pokemon. But what about the Pokemon community? Fortunately, there's endless nonsense. So, this tweet appeared in my recommended, I had to go to the source, and my goodness, what is going on? Just me being an idea guy here. This, this like, already begins with the most midwit tweet. I love it. Why are there no team content houses for TCG players? Some of you need to go all in, split rent with other players and creators, and commit. It presents the perfect opportunity to catapult TCGs into the mainstream. And fortunately, like, I gotta give the Pokemon community some credit. This didn't actually, like, take off 78,000 views. That's a lot. Couple retweets. I don't know how algorithm did it, but... I keep saying this just to make sure everyone knows. When Elon first bought Twitter, he said 1 to 1.5% is a good like ratio. So whenever you see a post, just kind of do that math and see how it goes. This is uh, well under that. 100 likes on 78,000 views? People aren't having it. Now the weird thing is, the Pokemon community then trips at the finish line because it's for reasons. Like, it's just for stupid, stupid reasons. It doesn't make any sense. So instead of having an actual analysis or breakdown of what's going on here or a proper reaction from the Pokemon community, it's just memes and nonsense. Pretty small niche outside the big three and demographic is largely age 24 to 35. That's about the age range you buckle down on a career path and maybe start a family. D does this guy not know what millennials and zoomers have been up to for the last decade? And also just how content creation space goes where some people like make it make it and then they're set by the time they're 30 what's this response and reaction getting the proper like ratio move the wife girlfriend make her play or create content to what is hap what how 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 detached from life have people become and just the world a lot of tcg players have families no, no, they don't. Now, I will say, like, when you go to a regional or a locals, it's like, wow, there's a lot of old people here. You don't look at any of the people in the top of VGC or TCG or any kind of Pokemon and go, ah, yes, those are some well-settled family men that don't have time for anything else, even though their entire life is dedicated to topping for Pokemon events. This dude's making a meme, and then he has just, like, like, that's, that's his real thought. That's his real belief. Phase TCG, that's the vision. TCG content doesn't have the audience to keep it sustainable. Even the successful content houses with larger audiences are primarily video games. They can struggle to keep content fresh. We both know the eyes and money are two lacking things in the industry. Not? You get, like, sponsors, and you get views, and then you win. And then, if anybody's looking for an unemployed 26-year-old TCG player with no family and no hopes of starting one, I'm your guy. So, like, that, there, there's enough of that to go around. As for if this is the proper person or ambition, probably not, because the Pokemon community is all weirdos, but here, he, this kind of, like, folds it back into why I'm just kind of baffled by, by this statement and the overall response from the community, because we, we've seen this already for over the last decade. I mean, there's individual Poketubers making enough money or have made enough money to where they could fund the house entirely by themselves as like some kind of startup thing. And then if at any point the creators become self-sustaining, which would be easy, and we've already seen this with stuff like the King Nappy. He had Lumio Station and then just like the whole Nappy crew, even though we know where that went, it was incredibly successful for a time. And then whoever Nappy decided to take in, they're now making a living playing Pokemon. And whether you turn that into a house or a group or something that goes a little deeper and i think with something like a tcg you actually need to have people in-house playing games with each other but you can also see that being successful in other places i have played one game of magic in my life and i do have 100 percent win rate so i am quitting well ahead because i top deck a shock for lethal but card market is one of my favorite youtube channels even though i don't play also i watch rudy alpha investments and we can see with like card market oh They've actually made this very successful and also have like some really high view pop off videos, some great series, some great breakdowns and their philosophy of, hey, let's just make paper magic content for YouTube actually worked. Now, there is the advantage of having a major card seller being able to like fund and sponsor or at least give this experiment a try. But I think the content goes well beyond that. 
and nothing's really stopping that from happening inside of Pokemon, even though that also happens inside of Pokemon. Like, do these people just not pay attention to any break content? Where you have large card sellers and collectors make videos about their five, ten, or twenty thousand dollar vendor purchases of the new Pokemon set, and then they make a lot of that money back in just the video ad revenue. So, like, yeah, this thing already exists in Pokemon, and there's nothing like stopping it from happening. But also, you need people like successful and driven enough to make it happen, even though you kind of find that when it comes to content creation but then there's also like the bad dark side of it where you get like the super desperate streamers that are not even making it forever they're just kind of barely surviving off of a couple of whales in their audience that are just like overly donating to them where there's a lot of people that are like oh go fund me for my overpriced streaming setup because I then then I'll make it even though they haven't like made it before that point so a lot of e-begging going on but that's also not stopping anyone from just like getting a group of TCG players and then e-begging their way to success. You know, fake it till you make it. That's like 98% of all the Pokemon content creators. So that's my big confusing thing about this. Like, it's 2024, and this person thinks they have the revolutionary idea of making a TCG content house. Or like some kind of TCG group to catapult into the mainstream, even though that already happens. And there's a lot of ways of doing it, and also doesn't have to just be competitive TCG content. You could do fun stuff and like alternative videos like what Card Market does, or you could also just have breaks. So I guess it is kind of weird that this hasn't really been brought through, even though all the pieces are there. Like if Unlisted Leaf spun off with a couple of his friends and then they actually like played TCG, they could, yo, Unlisted Leaf actually could have like super mega popped off where you're playing original vintage Pokemon because he already collects a lot of those cards or is breaking open a first edition base set. You do that and then you actually play with it and then you like double your revenue or something and then you get your house together and you get other creators and then yeah i guess i guess that's what's missing but but i think this dude has it backwards and i think the rest of the community knows like well everyone in play pokemon is actually a loser at this point so it would be really hard to coordinate that even though i feel like the path is there where you make it about like content first and try to spin it to where like you're doing breaks or card openings or new sets and stuff and you're making like unlisted leaf kind of content but then every tuesday and friday you're doing an actual like tcg match and if those are getting 40 50 000 views then like yeah you're easily funding all of this stuff and if you just like keep getting more popular and keep blowing up it gets even crazier and there's also a lot of really cool ideas you could do where you could like recreate top matches from regionals or like actually pit the meta decks against each other and then have analysis so like I imagine there's a lot of channels doing it, but they just don't have the sauce. They don't have the right personality. They don't have the SEO or any kind of... Like, I think that's also the problem is, like, Pokemon's dead. No one cares enough about Pokemon, even though it has all of the pieces, because the Pokemon community, these individuals suck too much to make the Pokemon community an interesting place. And the same thing happened in BGC. Same thing happening with, like, Pokemon News, where it's all fake leaks. And then you just, again, you look at all the top creators inside of anything Pokemon. It's like, yeah... They're just, like, lame, fake content, so there's nothing to build the community, even though they are successful with that lame, fake content. There's nothing else you can you can do with that. And this is the tweet I saw first that really just got me, like, uh, the community. What What is the Pokemon community? I'm of the mindset. There's a lot of money out there for people in the Pokemon TCG. Tabletop games of two players testing, co-teaching group coaching classes, better personal results from in-house testing... Like, yeah, that would actually be pretty crazy. It's like, we one of our dudes got top four at the regionals, or we top eight at internationals, and then that's how you do it. Like, yeah, you bring the competitive content in, but I think we can also see this with, like, how Wolfie VGC is with Pokemon VGC. Dude's a complete fraud, has gotten, like, propped up in really weird ways by the Pokemon company and community, even though there's nothing, there's nothing substantive about Wolfie. He cheated his way to the top and then spun it into mediocre content. So it's not getting anyone into Pokemon. It's also kind of the death of meritocracy that we've seen more like for streaming, you know, a decade ago now, which sounds like an, an old long time away. But no, like it was 2014, 2015, even sooner than then, where the primary way you would get popular as a streamer or content creator is by actually being good. If you were one of the top players, people wanted to watch that content. But now it's entertainment, which is also why we see all this fraudulent behavior from people like Pokemon Challenges cheating as challenges, and then people still falling into that and thinking 
he's doing anything interesting or accomplishing something. Same thing with Dream cheating his speedruns, faking his manhunt content. No one cares about real or skillful content anymore. They just want memes and zoomer editing on fake garbage. And that does make some of these things more difficult, but we can also see where it's like, yeah, you actually make good content and then that can follow. So this dude's waiting for some early 20-somethings to change the game. But then why why don't you? Like, it, it is that easy when you really break it down. You don't have to be a 20-something. Because, I mean, there's still 30-somethings getting into the content space and being massively successful. Or people that have, like, kind of grown up throughout this. Or, like, slowly grown a little bit. That definitely have the experience in content creation or the knowledge of playing Pokemon for a while to make this happen. So, like, you're actually not going to get some weirdo zoomer who actually isn't good at anything to change the game it's, mo it's mostly going to be the established people trying to take everything that's been successful inside of poketubing and then make it work but it's definitely there i'll add to this these two people came into our content sphere and have been killing it out of nowhere current mindset of what pokemon trading card game content should be is stale all right let's see if this is actually anything lamau this person has me blocked Wait, I'm I'm very confused. The transition to Pokemon is killing it on these views? Yeah, I think the and then I saw like something about Dead Draw Gaming, but even then Okay, okay, the the content space is just awful in TCG, but I think that just kinda goes with everyone in play Pokemon being fraudulent awful. This is a little better performance. So I mean like you 10x this. And then you do it with like two other people and that's just that's just done that's free you're set also you find the common thread everywhere where it's like these cheaters these weirdos they're they're always followed by chris brown and yet nothing is done to make the scene better i think the issue of what you can learn from coaching and in-house testing off the two same players gets tainted because one is just better or you learn the tendencies however that doesn't stop success a lot of like getting good at fighting games just kind of like breaking out and becoming super successful or also other tcgs or even pokemon where it's like you just have your friend or maybe like a small group of people where you just keep battling and keep getting better and then you come out of it at like a regional or higher caliber level because you just keep testing and making each other better same thing with like just pokemon pokemon tcg players can definitely become competitively successful just playing with a small group and then testing against that and then just building skill in that way. I just don't think like coaching or training videos would be interesting again because there's like no competitive value anywhere in the content sphere. But overall, like you don't need that. You can still make something happen. Speaking from experience, money is extremely not there relative to the necessary hours of commitment. <laughs> oh, this person, this is just like wrong. This is, this is incredibly wrong, because again, you just look at any Poketuber or anyone finding success on YouTube, it's like, yeah, there's definitely enough. You get in the algorithm and start performing, you stream, you get sponsors, you're making tens of thousands of dollars a month. That's definitely enough money, but I guess it's just these, like, entitled kids that don't want to work more than 40 hours a week or be at a loss for a while. No, you have to put in the time. You have to be crapped on for a while, maybe even years to build, and then the payoff comes later. But because of all the success that we've seen in content creation and streaming, all these kids just want to get into it and be like, well, yeah, I should just immediately come in and start making four or $5,000 because that's fair every month, even though I have no experience. But, you know, I'm definitely worth it. And if not, it's not worth putting into. It's like, what is this? That type of investment is better served making other forms of content than gameplay vids? No? What? YouTube gaming is still one of the biggest things. Like, I guess, like, maybe it would be... be wait, but not than gameplay vids. Like, maybe that time could be could work into a Minecraft house still. And then you make more money sooner. But this is... I don't get it, man. No one gets it. I guess that's kind of, like, why we haven't seen this. Or why Pokemon is just completely unsuccessful. And it's only, like, frauds and bad actors in the content space. It's because no one gets it. It's a tough space. But I think that's because, like, the Pokemon community has earned its destruction at this point and then everything else about it is just like it just kind of keeps getting earned and confirmed wherever you go like these are the people pitching these ideas not doing it and then and then saying like oh there should be something that happens here this twist in my brain more than i expected because i'm just like what what is going on pokemon just dead 
But then, this also has been on the table for over a decade. That's why Unlisted Leaf found so much success. That's why there's still several, like, large TCG channels and also others that have just kind of, like, popped up during the various Pokemon TCG booms. Everyone was kind of in the position to take advantage of it, but once again, no one wants to take the risk, and they're too entitled to, like, actually put in the work to make it happen. We're like, yeah, you actually have to do a bit of a gamble. But at the same time, college, the responsible thing, is the irresponsible gamble where you're taking out half of a house mortgage to then not be able to pay it back for 20 years. And if you don't get, like, super successful in your high-paying field, you're completely screwed. Yeah, the best thing is to, like, take a trade or vocations. I mean, like, become an electrician, use that money, buy Pokemon stuff, and then make videos about it with the other eight hours a day. Like, sure, you're doing full-time work for your, your job, and then you're putting in another 40, 60 hours into content creation that's losing you money, but eventually it pays off. And then, then you're, like, big, big set, and you see some of the crazy success like we've seen in Pokemon. So, yeah. Weird. Weird is all I have to say.